Hey guys, Mr. Abyss here with Life as a Shonen. If you are enjoying the content in our channel, don't forget to like our videos and go ahead and subscribe. Hey guys, Mr. Abyss here this week to bring you the latest chapter of our favorite manga created by the greatest story writer I've ever seen in my entire life, Eiichiro Oda. Uh, this week we'll be bringing you chapter 894, so let's get to it. So I actually gotta open my browser back up. Here we go and let's full screen it again like last week. Heard something goes down. Uh, I tried not to read ahead or get any spoilers. I'm very bad with spoilers. I can't help myself if I see more little tidbits of the story. But uh, we open up with the cover story again this week. It's got Leo, Leo, I don't remember his name this time. Leo and the other Tontadas. Why are they back there? Oh, they're escort for Reverie. That makes sense. So they're following uh, King Riku and everyone over to Reverie with uh, VV and blah, blah, blah. Cool. Let's continue. Last we left, uh, <coughs> Katakuri had a, a moment where he acknowledged Luffy as being on the same level as him. You know, the entire fight he was kind of talking down to Luffy. So, it's one of the big the uh, themes I think continues throughout One Piece. Though our later our recent villains are kind of not doing it. But most villains really underestimate Luffy and underestimate the ability of the Straw Hat crew. And Nell did... Cro Crocodile did. Smoker did it first. Uh, definitely Moria did. CP9 did, but they acknowledged him pretty quickly. I think Doflamingo... Doflamingo thought he didn't underestimate them, but he totally did. And I think Katakuri has done underestimating them. But let's continue on with the chapter. We start off back in... Okay, so we're back with uh, Luffy when he was training with Rayleigh. And if you're unable to dodge 100 times, you won't be allowed to eat. But I'm hungry, Rayleigh. Concentrate. Do you think that an enemy will care if you're hungry? Every attack has an intent. Every attack has an aura. So he's training him in observation, cocky. Cocky. He's training uh, Luffy in observation hockey. I think we're going to get to figure out kind of the deeper meaning behind observation hockey. Honestly, to me, it sounds like ultra instinct that Goku's getting. So, you know, we can be as happy as we want about Goku getting ultra instinct, but Luffy's had this thing for years now. Uh... Instead of being able to sense the attack that's coming, Luffy can smell the food that's cooking, so. <laughs> He's not going to be able to pay attention while there's food. So you got Luffy flailing about wildly. Uh, Rayleigh thought Luffy was trying to hit him, but he was actually trying to reach for the food. <laughs> and Luffy gets a staff across the face. Rayleigh is not having any of this. He's here to train hockey, not eat meat. But during this, he can Luffy starts to be able to sense the anger coming from Rayleigh for how he's acting. And Rayleigh notes to him that is also hockey. So observation hockey doesn't just read the motions of the grass and the wind and blah, 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 blah. It also throws human emotion into it. So I guess if a person's getting angry, you can sense that anger. Or if they have high greed, perhaps that's how they were able to find Karabu. And also how they're not able to sense people sometimes. Because uh, I'm not 100% sure, but on Zo, when Luffy was in the forest fighting the gorilla and uh, the, the gorilla and the bull, he was not able to sense Pedro. So perhaps it's because Pedro and them were masking their emotions, so Luffy was not able to sense that they were there. It's not just that you... So it's more like you really do sense their presence, but you have to have a presence to be sensed. Uh, after this, Luffy's passed out. He is worn out completely. Uh, still has his blindfold on. The animals are starting to surround him. Okay, the animals are actually bringing Luffy food. So this might, this is still before he tamed the island, but the lesser, smaller animals, not the gigantic, uh, gorilla or the gigantic crocodile, are actually bringing Luffy food. And they actually do have bandages on their face, so Luffy probably kicked their ass. But he orders them to go away. Ah, so that was Rayleigh's thing. Oh, that's kind of cool. So, the way all these... I'm sorry, let me cut this off. I don't want this to be annoying for y'all. So the way that uh, all these guys train their conquerors hockey, it seems, or at least their trainers trained them, was by removing... Or actually, how Oda trained them, uh, if we go by the third guy. But uh, it's removing something that they truly desire so that it will force them to do what you want. With Luffy, we took away food and meat. With Zoro, we took away alcohol. With Sanji, we took away women themselves. 
That is why they were able to attain these high levels of hockey that they were. There were no distractions for them. It was just about the trial. Get it done. Get your hockey. Then, eventually, you can go back to these things that you love. So Luffy is ordered to uh, not be able to eat. Uh, Rayleigh continues on. I guess this is later on where he let Luffy start to eat because they're having dinner around the campfire while badass Rayleigh drinks out of his flask. It makes me want a flask. Like, I drink. I don't drink that heavily anymore. But, ah, flask is pretty cool. He's explaining to Luffy that uh, it's all a part of the color of his observation. Oh, wow, there's different levels to it? Okay, so here's what Rayleigh's saying. All of that is part of the color of observation, but it seems that you're more proficient in sensing the feeling of living things. Huh. So Luffy's better at feeling their intent of the attack coming versus something like sensing what's going on with the motion around them or feeling how the air moves. Or That's interesting. I didn't know there was a separation there. Rayleigh continues on, but if you have that ability, then you will definitely be capable of predicting an opponent's movements as well. Among the most powerful people in the world, there are those who can see a small glimpse of the future. And Luffy ex exclamates, the future? What will you do if you meet one of those people with only two years of training? So he really was just like, he got the basics. I always thought Rayleigh was just saying that, and it was like, you know, he actually got way more than that. No, Luffy... Got a basic understanding of all three hockey, and it's up to him to continue forward in battle to help it grow. It's hard to think you'll be able to reach that level. You'll have a rough time. So Rayleigh is admitting that Luffy is not as proficient in that. He can't do it all, which I guess that would be why Sanji was able to dodge Katakuri's attacks versus Luffy, because he can sense it even further than Luffy. He can get the intent, the emotions, the surroundings. That's pretty cool. Makes me happy. I... Uh, Let's see. Okay, so uh, Rayleigh's talking to him about how you're going to be able to beat someone. You're going to have a rough time fighting someone like that. And Luffy uh, retorts to him. I guess it just depends on what kind of person they are, which you have an exclamation question mark from Rayleigh. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Their personality. That's what you care about? I've never considered that aspect. Huh? Of course. There will be times when you won't just be able to run away, Luffy. Ah... So Luffy's really thinking back. That's a cool, like, really cool panel of Luffy. It's the most I've ever seen his hair drawn out before. That's really cool. He's still got the giant bump over his eye. But there's a lot more detail to his hair than normal. Uh, he hears Rayleigh's voice speaking to him in his head. He's kind of surrounded by darkness now. Really messed up. But he's concentrating. And he hears foo 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 foo, which is, uh, I guess, Rayleigh's laugh. You seem to be having some trouble. Come. I'll do my best to make you capable to do it. And then in the darkness, he sees the form of Katakuri and his multiple mochi gatling arms coming at him. And Luffy is able to pull off dodging every single one of Katakuri's attacks. And he has at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mochi arms going at him. Uh, if you remember back when Luffy fought Anel and he went into that kind of dummy stage where he was just... Uh, he's actually doing that consciously now. It's really, really cool. A lot of growth for Luffy. Katakuri notices it, switches up his attack, so while the arms are coming, because, you know, they're separate entities. They're on the little donuts, so they can do what they want, while Katakuri does what he wants. So he goes at him with a, what's a foot? goes at him with a foot attack, and while Luffy dodges that one, he's not able to keep up with the donut arms in the sky. So he gets hit in the face by one of Katakuri's punches. And is about to get hit by another one, but Luffy puts up his arm with some armament hockey, hockey on it and blocks the attack. But immediately after he blocks it, he takes his hand back and starts shaking it. It's actually got little lines around it, and it's throbbing. So he's fighting some really, really strong ar armament hockey right now, as well as next level observation hockey. I mean, this fight is pushing Luffy. We're getting to, like, Luchi levels now. Luffy is struggling mightily and doing everything he can to be able to beat this guy. But he's, you know, he's been fighting an uphill battle. Katakuri was already up here. Luffy was down here and progressively, while he's been getting his ass kicked, has been trying to get closer and closer, more damage, closer. So it's, it's going to come to a head and I don't think it's going to be too much longer. What is this? It's, oh... Oh, okay, so Katakuri rears back, 
And the mochi starts forming around his arm, and it starts swelling up. Which Luffy, if you can see his face, he's, he's losing his mind. I guess he kind of knows what's about to come, because it actually is similar to one of the attacks he has. So we have Katakuri using what he calls the grilled mochi. When he uses the attack, it's kind of like a hawk gatling, except it's got a bomb on the back of it. So the mochi hand is going towards him, and fire is shooting out the back of it. Dude, Katakuri is a beast. And Luffy takes this attack. Does he take the... Oh, wow. He takes it straight either to the face or the torso. So they're rocket punches now. Man, like, this is a good fight. The mirror world is devastated now. Uh, Luffy gets thrown through another pillar inside of it. There's cracks all over the wall. Half the mirrors are broken. It's so weird. Uh, Katakuri's uh, Devil Fruit is always so weird to me. It's like... It's not a Logia, but it, it is. But it's not. I don't know. Uh, so you have Katakuri stand... So every time Katakuri uses this uh, explosion technique, he loses that limb. Uh, so you have him standing over Luffy missing an arm completely, but he mochis it back. Luffy's standing up once again from the rubble and instantly goes straight at Katakuri. Uh, oh, wow, he gets a good attack off on him, actually. Punches him directly square in the face. Really doesn't bother me. So we're back on Beige's ship. It's 10, 10 p.m. So it's him and the fire tank pirates kind of observing what's going on as they make their way to the island. But uh, Chiffon actually says to them, no, it's not a good plan. Because Liquor Island isn't far enough. We're going to have to lure them to Puff's Island. And they got to let everybody know that they can't go to Liquor Island now. Are you out of your mind, Chiffon? It's not going to take her very long. She's getting close to emaciated. She's skinny now. Like, it's kind of crazy, dude. She lost her crazy fire hair going on. Her tongue still hanging out. She looks a lot more like a witch now. I doubt her power... She's probably going to have, like, strong special attack. But physical attack and defense is not going to be too high anymore. She doesn't have the bulk to take those giant hits she normally would. Plus, she's ravenous. I think she's more insane than she normally is. Ooh, great. So right after that, boom, we switch right back. That's why I love Oda's pacing. You gave me just enough of that. Now we're back to the Katakuri fight. And the first thing we see is Luffy taking a big mochi uh, armament hockey punch straight to the face. Bam, we switch back to the Thousand Sunny. That's I really love the way he's doing this. Give us a little here, here, here. It's like I was talking about last week. Oda likes to move all the stories at once so they can reach a pinnacle. And he's a master. Uh, looks like one of Zoro's uh, uh, Poundaho, what is it, the cannon, where he uh, does the attack and it's a distance slash. Well, those are flying at the Thousand Sunny and Jinbei's having to dodge them uh, one by one. So it is Smoothie. We're back on her ship. She's attacking them with her sword and, you know, doing the, what would you call it, distance cuts, something? I don't know. But uh, she's kind of, wait, What? Smoothie is gigantic. I didn't notice that at first. She's like, she's the size of a giant nearly. Uh, the girl, other girls on the ship are screaming to her, Smoothie, the ship is going to sink if you get any bigger than this. And Smoothie's just kind of really concentrated on hitting them. Why can she turn into a giant? Huh. Does she fill her up with juice? I don't know, that's weird. Anyways, uh, she's cursing Jimbei because Jimbei's an amazing helmsman, but even he's getting tired at this point. But he does instruct the crew, don't let your guard down yet. I believe in your navigational command, Nami. And Nami's as confident as ever. It'll be okay. I'm taking responsibility for this. Uh, Carrot's actually recovered enough to stand up again. She's back. She asked them if, uh, has Luffy won yet? And I wonder if Sanji's there. Sorry that I had to sleep for so long after the transformation. Uh, little sis. That's why. She's got to join the crew. It's Chopper's little sis. He's actually got the chance now to feel like a cool guy. Uh, did Nekomumushi and Inirashi also transform like that? Oh, why didn't she give us the answer? I would love to know that. <clears throat> Brooke screams to them that Sanji would contact if anything happened. I wonder if that woman is a giant. So he's still talking about Smoothie. Flashback to Ka God. Flashback to Katakuri fight. And Luffy just took a spur to the face. Man, he's not doing too well against Katakuri. Katakuri's taking damage, 
But, like, Luffy's dying. Ugh. Luffy's tenacity is top notch. Flashback to Pudding flying on... Oh, Pudding and Sanji flying on the... Uh, what's it called? What's his name? Arabian, I think that's his name. The little flying carpet. He's talking to Pudding, saying, Thank you, Pudding. You were a great help to us to the very end. Uh, which starts freaking her out, and you know she's having one of her moments. She's actually embarrassed because everyone's going to think that they're a married couple, and she can't handle that. She's starting to have a little meltdown. Oh, I think we're going to get a really badass Sanji moment, eventually. Uh, Sanji says to her while she's freaking out, Luffy is going to be appearing right in the middle of multiple squads and fleets. And I will definitely save my captain. So we're going to get... You might have, I don't know, you might have a... Dang. There's a lot of people there. So we're getting a big, big double spread page. So on the right side, we are back in Mirror World, where Luffy is still standing against Katakuri, but it's kind of looking like Luffy finally doesn't have much of anything left. He's taking every single punch that Katakuri throws at him. He's still standing, but he's not in any kind of state to continue on. And Katakuri realizes it. you get a little panel of him just kind of staring at Luffy with a dot, dot, dot. So I, he's in bad shape now. It's like to the point to me that Indian's lobby was at where there's so much going on that's making you hopeful, but then there's like Luffy's dying now. And they're over here, and Big Mom's chasing him here, and Smoothie's over there. Ah, it's a very good, very good arc. I'm glad we had it. Uh, about 30 minutes more further in the future, maybe an hour. It's 1136. Uh, you've got all the people on Kakao Island, and you have the citizens commenting that I can't believe there's so many siblings gathered here at one time on the island. Just how wary of Straw Hat Luffy are they? So, we get a little spread out panel of the Charlotte family 30th through 36th sons and 30th through 34th daughters. They are called the Decuplets. De de <laughs> uh, there's Oven right there. You've got the 33rd son. He looks like a swordsman. He has a cool little design. His hair looks like Madaras. Uh, his name is Raisin. You have the 35th son of the Charlotte family whose name is Yuen. So, I mean, there's multiple high-level threats here. I don't know what they're going to do. They're all surrounding the single mirror that Luffy is going to have to come out of. Sanji better put in some work. Even more ships are starting to arrive. How many tens of thousands of people does the enemy have? Oh, wow. So uh, the people think it's a full army invading Totland. But they're eventually told less than 10 people are expected to be there. Which these guys are starting to underestimate them. Brownie. Man, we're introducing more guys. So you got 32nd son of the Charlotte family, Brownie. He's the guy that's commenting on, I'm going back to sleep. This isn't even worth my time. Uh, you have the 27th daughter of the Charlotte family, jo Joconde. And you have, oh, wow. Okay, so he lost his uh, position. So we actually get introduced to Snack now with a bounty of 600 uh, million berries. So Snack, it kind of puts in... I know that bounty doesn't always equal strength, but it is a good indicator. And if he's at 600 million, is it that impressive that... Uh, what's the giant's name? I really need to brush up on my name before I do this. So it, the giant on the supernova thing with the uh, that's from Skypea... Uh, that beat Snack with a 600 million berry bounty. I mean, that's not that crazy. Luffy's got just about got that. He's the 500 or 600 right now. So let's slow down the hype train on uh, Uruj. There you go. Fast forward another 30 minutes. Their battle is still going on, but it's just Luffy taking damage. Kakori is actually starting to get pissed off. Uh, he screams to Luffy, What's the matter, Straw Hat? Are you. And then Luffy goes, oh, that's right. He remembers something. Are you finished already? Katakuri, I guess, the feeling that he's feeling right now is I finally found someone that was worth fighting. But the moment you got to where I was at, it was already almost over for you. And Luffy starts to get up again, and it's actually like pleasing Katakuri. Um, he says, yes, endure it. Stand back up. And Luffy tells him, it's time for me to end this with you. With this, if you, and Katakuri interrupts him and says, I've already answered you. This is the end. Yeah. Gear fourth. Uh-huh. 
caught a crew. Okay. Oh. So we have Gear Fourth Snake Man. Oh, okay. If I had to give a. All right, I mean, that's the end of the chapter. Doesn't say we're on break. We've got a brand new Gear Fourth co form coming. Fight's about to ramp up. Now, now that it takes this much damage to have to beat Katakuri, in my other video where I had a uh, prediction, prediction that Sanji actually would have been an adequate opponent for Katakuri, if Luffy's got to use it, I don't know if Sanji can duplicate the damage of Gear 4. But who knows? This form might not be physically that powerful. If I do imagine it, you know how he has the uh, cool, cool deer, where he shoots his arm and it stretches and follows the opponent? Maybe it'll be multiple versions of that. So it'll be so many attacks that Katakuri is having to dodge that he's not going to be able to handle it. So Luffy might try to be overwhelming him with numbers far greater than Gatling, which, like, Gatling's thousands and thousands of attacks probably. So we're going to get something crazy. I would imagine him throwing the, the elasticity where he pulls his arms in, but just speed. Either way, it's going to be awesome. Then you've got a uh, big mom pirate surrounding the mirror. So even after he gets done and leaves, you're surrounded by oven. I mean, these are high level family members. And then there's ships coming, which one of the former suite commanders is on that ship. They're going to have a very hard time getting out of here, and I cannot wait to see it. But that's it for this week. See you guys next week. Bye bye.